Hi, this video will demonstrate the use of the caudal attachment. The elastic band can be directly attached to the caudal loop in the back or can be attached to a caudal belt depending on how much length you need versus how much tension you need. Also depends on how tall or short the, the person is that's using the therapy and also depends on how thick or long the elastic band is. The idea is you want to have it tight enough that you get a good decompressive force or stretching or traction force. The great thing about a caudal attachment is you can localize the traction and decompression just at and above the sacral base right at the L5, L4 disc area. The thing that makes this special is we're combining the synergistic forces of an extension arch, a press up, which creates more stretching or decompression or elongating of the full spine, and a caudal directional traction force. You put all that together and you get a very special and very localized decompression of the lumbar region better than anything I've really ever experienced. I think you're going to really like this technique. It has become one of my favorites and one of the most effective techniques for intervertebral disc syndrome, some types of facet syndromes, any condition that's going to respond to a McKenzie press-up maneuver will respond even better to this. So you attach the belt to the caudal loop or the caudal belt to the back. Go to your hands and knees and start by going down onto your elbows and lying down your stomach. Now for some people or some conditions, this may be all you can tolerate. So this is the beginner's position, and then you flex your feet, which allows you to push away, which now you're adding more of a stretching effect. And here's where it gets great. When you do your press up, and you let your hips drop in, wow, the McKenzie Press up in and of itself is a very special maneuver, but when you provide a decompression stretch at the same time, now you're getting a lot of bang for your buck and you're getting a synergistic therapeutic effect. If you need more stretch, you can push your feet, the bottom of your feet, all the way to the edge of the platform and do the same thing, which increases the stretch. You always want to make sure that you stay within the recommended safety parameters for the device. So whether your feet are against the platform or if you push further out to get more of a stretch, come up on your elbows and that is going to be a wonderful pose for beginners or for somebody with a more extreme condition, always start with a very minimal amount of tension and traction force. Then, if you can tolerate it, go up to a press-up position and let your hips drop in. You can also do this as an up and down pumping movement. You can, if the clinical condition allows, you can throw in some rotation into the procedure. You implement rotation by dropping one elbow down, coming up, the other elbow down, coming up, and then doing some pumping forward, pushing away with your feet, increasing the tension, doing a little more rotation, one elbow down, the other elbow down, which causes rotation, and then coming down onto your elbows, you can Rotate your shoulder down, pushing away, and do the other side. Rotate your shoulder down, push away. This may not look like much, but it is the most concentrated and localized 
stretch and decompression traction effect. And the beauty of this is the synergy combining the McKenzie pose, the decompressive caudal force, the arching effect. When you go up, you're creating a full stretch of the whole spine, dropping your hips in. That is the classic McKenzie press up on steroids. I think you're really going to like this. This is my favorite maneuver. And I appreciate you watching the video. Take care.